I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Of course, those were the famous words of John Nada in the movie They Live. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and air, Tim. It's Monday, Monday. I was a little late putting up this video because I kind of wanted to see what was going to happen with James Bradbury. I want to talk about some potential destinations, some other teams that are going to probably run out and try to grab them as quickly as possible. But you know what? We also have to sit here and look. We want to talk about, I, I personally want to talk about the salary cap today. And I want to talk about how Joe Shane can become Joe Shane, the salary cap magician. Look at my left hand. Look at my left hand. Don't look at my right stone. And now all of a sudden things are just going to happen. I also want to talk about something that I'm going to refer to as rotational salary cap or rotational cap space. And we're going to talk about that a minute as well. Of course, uh, James Bradbury, we're still waiting to see what happens. I, I have this inkling that he's going to end up in Philadelphia. I think, I think that's pretty much, uh, I mean, <laughs> if I was Philly, I would roll out the Brinks truck for old James. Because what not only do you weaken your opponent your your opponent in the east, but you also strengthen your secondary, which needs a lot of help. But right now, if you take a look at the Giants, we are about six million under the cap. We need at least eleven, if not more, just for our free just for our rookie class, and not for, and not to forget to have what I like to refer to as operational cap space throughout the season. So the question is going to be, I mean, we've already done some restructuring. We've already moved some money around. We've already, we've already asked guys to take huge pay cuts. But the problem is you still have Leonard Williams sitting up there eating up 13% of your cap. You got Kenny G still eating up 10% of your cap. You still got Jory, Jory Jackson eating up 5% of your cap. I mean, it's not a, it's not a good, it's not a good look. And then people always forget when you have a lot of higher end first round draft choices, what happens is that money comes home to roost in round three, year three, four, and five. So you got Andrew Thomas bringing in eight, Daniel Jones bringing in eight, Saquon Barkley bringing in seven. So the problem is, even though we're going to get under the cap, even though we're still under the rule of 51, which which is going to help us greatly uh, until, of course, the the end of camp, um, we need to figure out a way to work this roster. We need to figure out a way to move this roster. You need to figure out a way to, to have the ability to make personnel changes during the season which will allow the Giants to remain competitive throughout the year. Now, the easiest way to do that, of course, is to basically stow away guys and hide them. <laughs> well, you're not really, you're not really, you're not really, I should rephrase that, you're not really hiding them on the practice squad, but you, you, you want to stow some guys away in the practice squad because anyone can sign anyone off the practice squad at any point in time, but you want to, unless they're the three guys you protect before, the, before that game, but you want to stow away some guys. Now, the guys on the practice squad make an equivalent, if they're on there for a full 18 weeks, of 165000 165, what is it, 100, 165600 And they are the lowest paid players. They make ninety two. They make a minimum ninety two, at least $9,200 a week. So those guys, you know, you have to take a look at it in regards to the fact that that's, that's their number to be on the practice squad. Now, the question is going to be, what happens when they go on the practice squad? They're basically going to go to minimum salaries. But the question is, and this is what I've talked about the other day, if you want this team to remain competitive, you take your last five roster spots, or maybe even your last four. So you're going to take, you're, you're basically going to take 49, 50, well, if you take five, but like I said, you, you take, you, let's just say we take the 49th spot, the, the 50th, 51st, 52nd, 53rd, and we work those on a rotational basis in reference to players on the practice squad. And what I mean by that is you need to go out and you need to find players that are either on the rookie equivalent salary or are within the first two years of their NFL career, because that's going to allow you at that point in time to basically have a much lower cap hit. So if, if you take a look at it, your minimum term of service is going to be like for rookies. Um, if, you take, if you take a look at the numbers directly, rookies right now, the number is 660000 minimum. Now, if you, take, if you have one year of service, your salary goes up to seven hundred eighty. If you have two years of service, it goes up to eight hundred and fifty. If you have three years of service, it goes up to nine twenty. If you have four, it goes up to nine ninety. If you have four to six, it goes, or I should say, that's four to six goes nine ninety. If you have seven or above, your rookie, your minimum salary is one point zero seven five million. 
So what you need to do is you need to find guys that fit your system and are talented enough that can fit one into one of these buckets, into the 600,000 bucket, the 708,000, the 850,000, the 920, or so on and so on and so on. Because what you need to do is you are going to be, of course, playing different teams each week. They're going to each have their own strengths. They're going to each have their own weaknesses. So what this will allow you to do is swap out salary cap slots. So if you decide that you are going to have rookies, three rookies on your, let's just say on your practice squad, and you're going to rotationally play them, that's, you can lock in that salary at 660,000. Now, let's say you are able to find a veteran to come in who's looking just to, you know, who's looking to hang on to his career, or maybe he's just looking for another payday, and you can get him and convince him to take the league minimum for a seven-year veteran of 1.075 million, maybe some incentives. You then can have, you can then try to find two of those guys and rotationally lock them into their spots and so on and so on. So let's just say we're able to find some diamonds in the rough. We're able to go out there in the free agent market because you're going to be able to find a plethora of players down the road when people get into camp and when they start releasing them. So let's say we find at least three guys with 900, you know, with three years experience. We can pay each of those guys $920,000 and rotationally move their salaries interchangeably. So basically what you're doing is you're going to lose. I probably would do it with the last five spots. So, but you're basically going to do is just have a collection of puzzle pieces that are all the same, that fit into the same collective, but at different salary slots. Now I know that's a little confusing and I was doing the math I was checking the math and I figured if you if the Giants can come in at like six to eight million under the cap during the season, which is going to be which is going to be a Herculean task for our old buddy Joe, you can easily rotationally fit in these salary salary slots. So let's just say we do. uh, Let's just make it easier. And we do six spots, the last six spots, because that's an even number. So let's just say you have three guys that at least have one year of service and you have, you slot them all in at 780 and you got three guys who have over three years of service. You slot them in at 920. You can then just interchangeably move these players in and out of your salary cap without affecting your bottom line number. So you basically set the last spots depending on how your roster is built at the end of training camp. So you set your last six spots at levels. So let's say we have 200 guys making 660. We have two guys making 780. And then let's say we got another two guys making 920. And so, like I said, per the opponent that you're playing, you can just then interchangeably move those pieces without affecting your cap. Things that make you go. Mm-hmm. It, like I said, it, here's the thing. Here's the broad scale of thing. It works on paper. <laughs> it works on paper. Now the only problem is you would have to go out and find the talent, cultivate the talent, and build the talent. And this is something I think you could do for a short period of time. This is something I think you could do for a season. I wouldn't want to run a franchise using these types of uh, using these types of moves. But like I said, I think it would work for a short period of time. It would allow you to maintain some flexibility of having maybe four, five, six million in cap space after you set your roster. And it would allow you to cultivate and hide some talent that you may need down the road once you have the opportunity to see how your team gels and meshes. And it also allows for injuries. Same, same, same scenario. You know, you can replace the 708,000 guy with the 660,000 guy. If there's an injury, so you can just move you like I said, it's going to be an, I, I would do it. Like I said, to me, it's interchangeable. And like I said, a million times, it works on paper. Will it work in real life? That would then fall on the, the talent evaluators, Joe judge, Joe judge, ah, not Joe judge, Joe Shane, <laughs> the name that should never be spoken. Joe Shane and Brian Dable. I was reading an article about Joe Judge right now and being, being with the Patriots. I shouldn't multitask. I should just do one thing, and that's that's actually just do the the podcast slash video instead of reading about Joe Judge. But like I said, it's gonna it's really gonna depend on your talent evaluators, your head coach, and your general manager, and if this full and your defensive coordinator, your offensive coordinator. But like I said, on paper it can work. On paper, I ran fifteen week scenarios because I haven't done a full 
17 weeks or technically 18 weeks with the buy. But I ran, I ran a 15 week scenario with moving players in and out and my spreadsheet always balanced out and it always allowed me to have additional cap space at the end. So I, like I said, it looks good on paper. Will it work? Lord only knows. And again, the similar online big blue bringing the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, if you ring that bell thing, it means that'd be awesome.